In this video, I'm going to talk about brainstem syndromes. Brainstem syndromes. But I'm only going to talk about them very briefly because there are a lot of potential brainstem syndromes. So there are many potential brainstem syndromes. And some of them can be quite complex. So they're very difficult to summarize quickly. So I'm just going to make kind of one point about these and then save the details of specific brainstem syndromes for later videos. A general pattern that may occur with a brainstem lesion on one side is a distinctive syndrome we call a crossed syndrome. So let me just write that down with some quotation marks. A crossed syndrome that can be pretty distinctive for a brainstem lesion on one side. And this kind of involves two parts. So let me write two arrows. And the first part of this involves dysfunction of a cranial nerve, cranial nerve on the same side, cranial nerve on the same side. And the second part of this is dysfunction of long tracts, long tracts to the other side. So not on the other side, but to or from the other side. So let me show you what I mean here. So let's take some hypothetical cranial nerve that's going to be on the same side as the lesion. So let me draw a little line here to represent a cranial nerve that's either carrying information away from the brainstem or into the brainstem on this side, on the right side, because it's going to be attached to some nuclei that are inside the brainstem. So if there's a lesion on this side of the brainstem, that'll cause dysfunction of this cranial nerve because those axons are coming in or out of that side of the brainstem. But in addition to these cranial nerves coming in and out of the brainstem, we're also going to have the long motor and somatosensory tracts that are passing through the brainstem on their way down to the spinal cord or up from the spinal cord. So let me draw some kind of long tract here, and we won't be specific. We'll just say it's one of these long motor or somatosensory tracts that's coming down this side of the brainstem. And we'll say it's one of the ones that crosses around here. And then the rest of the time, it's on the other side of the spinal cord to do whatever its function is onto the other side of the body. So it's either carrying somatosensory information from the left side of the body over here over to the right side of the cerebrum, or vice versa. It's carrying motor information from the right cerebral hemisphere down to the left side of the spinal cord to influence the left side of the body. So if there's a lesion of one side of the brainstem, we'll put the lesion right here. Let me draw an orange X through here to say there's some, some kind of dysfunction happening on this side of the brainstem, some kind of disease or pathology that's causing this tissue to not function properly. First, we can get dysfunction of this cranial nerve, which is on the same side as this lesion. So we're on the right side of the brainstem, and the cranial nerve comes out the right side, and it's going to do something with the right side of the head or the neck, let's say. So let's say this could be a, a motor nerve that's moving, say, the muscles of the face, and there could be weakness then on that side of the face. Or this could be a somatosensory nerve, carrying somatosensory information from the skin of the face on the right side back into the brainstem. So we can have dysfunction, we could have weakness or somatosensory loss, for examples, on the right side of the face here from this cranial nerve being involved as it enters or exits the brainstem here. But if this long tract is involved on the right side of the brainstem, we're not going to see abnormalities related to its function on the right side of the body because it's going to have a crossing point down below here where it's actually going to be serving the left side of the body. So whatever the function of this long tract, we could see abnormalities of that over on the left side of the body. We could see that in the limbs on the left and or the trunk on the left side. So let me just mark this in with this color. And if this is the corticospinal tract that contains the upper motor neurons, we could see weakness and or the upper motor neuron signs over here on the left side of the body. And if this is a somatosensory tract carrying somatosensory information up to the cerebrum, we could see somatosensory loss of whatever modalities, whatever types of somatosensation are carried in this particular pathway. So I think you can see why it, it got this nickname of a crossed syndrome because we have these abnormalities on the right side of the head and the left side of the body. And the reason for that is involvement of cranial nerve on, on the same side as the lesion and involvement of a long tract. The, the long tract itself is also involved on the same side of the lesion. But since the long tracts cross to perform functions on the other side of the body, we see those abnormalities on the other side of the body. 
So I'll stop there because there's there's a lot more going on with brainstem syndromes because the anatomy of the brainstem is fairly complex and there are many different syndromes that can occur. But sometimes we get these cross syndromes and, and these are pretty distinctive for lesions in the brainstem. There's really nowhere else in the nervous system that you can typically get this sort of pattern with a single lesion in one spot.